Thousands of homeowners in Gladwin and Midland counties are still picking up the pieces after the failure of two dams. 9 in 10's Christine Kinerva checks in on them in this special report, The Heart of Sanford. More than 11,000 people were displaced in the catastrophic flood that swept through Gladwin and Midland counties nearly six months ago. Here are a couple of their stories. Within 15 minutes, it was up to the side of the house. It was very quick. The sound of an alarm nobody wanted to hear. The sirens just blaring, and they're saying the dam breached. Leave now, get out now. The Edenville Dam had breached, and the Sanford Dam was next. It forced thousands to leave their homes without looking back. It was just chaos. The goal was get your things out of your house, whatever you could save. The next day, there wasn't much to return to. Homes in ruins, some completely gone, others like they've spent decades at the bottom of a lake. Everything, even what I put on the fridge, the refrigerator was completely tipped over, so all of that stuff was ruined. And here I thought, well, I'm going to save it all and get it up high enough. Stacy Summers lived here for 14 years with her husband and three-year-old son. It's kind of sad to like still look around and we used to hang out here and I used to cook with my kid over here and... I had a little small business that I ran out of my home. Now they're living at her parents' house as they work to clean up the mess. I mean, it still is overwhelming. It's emotional, but I'm sorry. Well, and then too, right off the bat. Across the lake, Kim Sedler sleeps on the couch in her camper. I went and stayed with my brother. I slept in a bed. <laughs> I cried myself to sleep. It was the first time I had been in a bed since May. While her family works to repair her home, she's trying to stay focused on moving forward. If I go over to the house and I just concentrate on, this is my task I'm doing today, and I don't look at anything else, I'm okay. But when you start looking outside, or if you look around the whole house, then it's overwhelming with the loss. Glenn Moots, a philosophy professor at Northwood University, says he's now dealing with the trauma of watching more than 20 years of memories washed away in mere moments. It's still home, but it's not the same. So what choice do you have? You, you, you have to go home. Now with the leaves beginning to fall, many are scrambling with the lingering worries that winter is on its way. Every day it gets colder. Every day it gets a little harder. You only have so much energy. You only have so much emotional strength. Since Stacy rented her home from her parents, she wasn't able to receive any federal assistance. Nearly six months after the flood, her home is still down to the studs. And as the leaves turn into snow, she's praying for heat. Oh man, I hope, <laughs> I hope I have a furnace. <laughs> like, I, that's it right now. Through the losses, hardships, and unimaginable weight of enduring a tragedy like this amid a global pandemic, the heart of Sanford continues to beat on. This community will be forever cross-weaved in a different way than it was before May. In Midland County, Christine Conerva, 9 and 10 News. We will continue the story in Sanford and the recovery efforts by a nonprofit that was created overnight. That's tomorrow in part two.